This is the confirmation lecture, and I'm going to try and explain why it is important to know what kind of confirmation your horse has. So what is confirmation? Confirmation is how your horse is put together, starting with the skeletal structure because that is the very basis of your horse, moving on to your joints and how those are put together, and then on the very last level is your muscling and how your horse looks from the outside. So why does it matter? Well, there are things that are going to be impacted by the conformation of your horse. First of all is the quality of horse. This means the overall look of your horse. If you have a very quality horse, this horse is going to be very good to look at and he's going to have good movement. Um, he's going to be a horse that you want to own. So the quality of movement is impacted by the skeletal structure and the joints as well. If you have a straight shoulder, they're going to have a choppy stride. If they have a short pasturn, they'll have a choppy stride. Too long of a slope on the shoulder or too long of a pasturn will give that horse a very long fluid stride, but could possibly give them joint problems later on in life. This leads to your quality of life. If you are competing with these horses and they don't have good conformation, then over time, their joints, their muscles, and their overall quality of life will deteriorate. And this leads to longevity. If you are competing on this horse and they don't have good conformation, then the chances of you competing on this horse for many years is greatly diminished. So for overall conformation, the halter horse world, unfortunately, is the one you came up with the way to tell the best conformation. I don't particularly care for halter horses. Uh, if you do, that's great. Uh, if you don't, that's great too. I call these horses the bodybuilders of the horse world and I don't necessarily agree with how they are raised, trained, and shown. But, be that as it may, they have come up with a way for studying horse conformation and to know if your horse has good conformation or not. So, quality, what does this mean? Again, it means, you know, if your horse looks good from the outside, no obvious problems, okay? Um, the rule of thirds, well, if you see the little red lines down the middle of this horse, you can see that his body is broken up into thirds. The front third, the barrel, and the rear third. These should be very even in your horse. They should not be one longer than the other. Um, or shorter than the other, they should be very equal in size for the rule of thirds. The slope of the shoulder and the slope of the hip, these matter uh, when it comes to stride length and quality of movement, whether or not a horse uses a lot of knee or not. And what you're looking at are the green triangles on the horse's front and rear ends. When you're talking about conformation, those slopes or those angles should be the same for both the front and rear end. You can see from the diagram there that on this horse, the angle from his point of shoulder and the point of his buttock are the same as one another. Same thing when you go up to the wither and the loin, that angle going down is also the same. Trapezoid body, well what the heck does this mean? If you continue to look at the green, you'll notice that it goes across at the top of the yellow square and across the bottom of the yellow square. This gives the body a trapezoidal look. This trapezoid should be even, as you can see on this diagram, and it should be with the same angles, like I just mentioned in the slope of the shoulder and the slope of the hip. And all of this matters. This matters with, again, movement, and it matters with overall quality, and this will help with longevity as well, because if these angles match, there's no extra stresses being put on any joint at any place. They should all be carrying the same amount of stress as every other joint. Now, of course, this goes for the main joints, you know, your shoulders, your withers, your hips, your uh, stifle, those are the main joints that we're talking about here, and of course the back, the, you don't want the back to be overstressed as well. For the front end conformation, you need to look at the knees from the side, the knees from the front, the toes, and the pasterns. 
So I have two diagrams here. And if you look at the top diagram over on the left, these are straight legs with a good front end. You can see that the dotted line goes from the point of the shoulder straight through the knees, through the fetlocks, and down through the toe of the hoof. In the next one, they call this splay footed. I've always known it as toed out um, or toe out in which the dotted line goes from the point of the shoulder across the outside of the knee, outside of the fetlocks, and the toes are turned so that the line goes through the quarter, the inside quarter of the foot. The next one being pigeon-toed. Again, this is just the opposite. However, most often times this just affects the very lower leg from the fetlock down and should not affect the knees. However, when these horses are moving, those knee joints are impacted greatly. Um, D is knock kneed or have a narrow front with a wide base. Okay, this would be like humans where we have our knees together and our ankles are out. And E is base narrow where the toes are too close to one another in, in regards to the point of the shoulder. And on F where they are bow kneed where the knees go out. You can see that on the bottom one as well. Now let me talk about this. From the front, you are looking at how the shoulder is imp impacted, how the fetlock is impacted, and how the knees are impacted. With A, you're going to have the same stresses on the shoulder, the knee, and the fetlock all at the same, that not one is getting more pressure than the other. On B, your knees are taking a huge amount of pressure because they are not set right, and the joints inside the coffin bone and P1 and P2 are getting extra stresses as well because of the bad conformation. Now in C, those fetlocks, P1 and P2, are also getting extra stresses, although the knees are not nearly as impacted. In D, the knees are somewhat impacted, but only because those fetlocks are um, set so um, wide and that they are going to put pressure on the inside of those knees. In E, the shoulders are going to take the brunt of the pressure because there is not enough width between the legs to carry all of that weight and so the shoulder is going to be impacted. In the last one, the knees are going to take extra pressure, the fetlocks are going to take a great amount of pressure, and the shoulders are going to take From the side view, you can see that the leg on the left is a straight line from the middle of the knee down to the middle of the fetlock with the hoof sitting just ahead of that line. Now when you have a pastern that is too straight, then your foot gets moved back into where it is within the line making that horse going to give you a very fast, short, choppy stride. They're not going to have a whole lot of flex in that pastern, therefore they could be breaking down early in that fetlock joint and pastern joints. On the third one, you have a too long of a pastern where there is a great deal of flex and there's too much room in between the foot and the line. These horses, they will have a lot of cushion when they are going, however, because there's so much flex in there, those tendons will tend to wear out sooner, and they will not stay sound for as long as you would like. Now in the next one, where we have a concave knee, that is also called a calf knee, and this is where the knee is going to take a great amount of pressure because all of that weight will hit right through the foot, the pastern, and the fetlock, and then just jar the hell out of that knee. The next one where the knee angle is convex, convex or over at the knee, um, your knee is not going to take quite as much pressure there, but your shoulder is going to take a lot of pressure. Uh, because once that knee is not able to flex completely, the shoulder will take the brunt of the concussion. And then you have your bone to fine below the knee, which means they're going to have a very, very small cannon bone, um, very small radius of the bone, and this can lead to fractures, um, tears in the tendons and whatnot, just because the structure there is not able to support what your horse is being asked to do. Rear end conformation, you need to look at the hocks from the back and also from the side. 
Now if we look down at the first diagram from the back, you can see from the point of the buttock straight down through the hocks, through the pastern and the fetlock, down to the middle of the hoof is ideal. Where you have a bandy-legged horse, that straight line goes to the inside of those hocks. Now following with our joints and how those work with pressures, it would you would see that those fetlocks are going to take a great amount of pressure where they are turned a little bit in just in order to make those legs work. The hocks are taking a lot of pressure because they are set so wide. And then you get to the bow-legged horse or the cow leg cow hocked horse is how I always learned it. And this horse's stifles are going to take a great amount of pressure because those hocks are so turned in as well as the fetlocks and pa pasterns taking all of the pressure off of those hocks. Now if you look from the side you can see you need a straight line from the rear of the buttock down to the back side of your cannon bones and pastern or er, and fetlock excuse me. A sickle shaped hock is going to move forward with the pastern and fetlock giving this horse kind of a concave look. Now looking at this picture you can see where the horse's hock and stifle are going to take a great deal of pressure because they are not supported by the fetlock and the pastern. When your hocks are out behind your stifle is taking all of the pressure because they are not completely underneath the buttock it is jutting out and makes it very difficult to move. If you have a straight hocked horse also called post-legged this horse's hocks will wear out very quickly and that they don't have the degree of, of mobility that they need to have. Pasterns and the fetlocks are also going to take a great deal of pressure and this horse will not stay sound as long as you would like him to although there have been a few that have really surprised me um, I know of a 15 year old pickup horse who is pretty post-legged and uh, he still does a really good job now keep in mind all of these problems with joints and whatnot depend on how hard you are using your horse a trail horse that's not used every day but just out walking on a trail can get away with lesser confirmation than a horse that does not. If you are a cutting horse uh, competitor or bell racing competitor, roping competitor, anything that puts a lot of stress on the joints, your horse needs to be nearly per perfect in order to stay sound. There's, there is a lot of concussion to the joints with these events.